friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today to show you how to dehydrate poultry such as chicken and turkey. And I would assume this would apply to any other poultry that you might be putting up. And so right here is a jar of turkey that I dehydrated from in 2022. Actually, it would have been right after Thanksgiving. And so that was from our Thanksgiving turkey. And it turned out really good. I've used some of it since and my jar is vacuum sealed and you can see I actually took some out of the jar, but I re-vacuum sealed the jar and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. And I did a video years a few years back where I was dehydrating chicken after I'd cooked it. That was I was just dehydrating it to to eat like a jerky, which is rather tough. But after doing that video, I decided to try cooking with some of it and I could never get it to rehydrate well enough. Well, by accident, I discovered a way that will work to make it turn out light and crispy and easy, and it's not so chewy and it rehydrates better. And there's two ways that you can go about this. Now, one would be if you already have pressure canned or pressure cooked your poultry, like this salmon I have right here. I just opened it up and drained some of the liquid into the dog's food. So I'm also going to be trying this up, uh, trying this today. So if you've either pressure canned or pressure cooked it, that's gonna help it turn out better when you go to dehydrate it. But if you don't wanna go through all the trouble of canning it, just dehydrate it, then the other method is simply, and this is the one I found out by accident, freeze it first. So I still had, this is the last of the turkey from our Thanksgiving for 2022. And I need to make some more freezer space. And I'm just gonna, even though I've been working out of this, I'm gonna go ahead and dehydrate up the rest. So now is the perfect time to do the video. So something about freezing it first changes it in such a way that when it dehydrates, it turns out light and crispy. Now, obviously, if you already have a freeze dryer and you're into that, and uh, that would do the same thing. But for those of us who either have no interest in buying a freeze dryer, don't already have one, or just simply can't afford a freeze dryer because they're far more expensive than a dehydrator, then this is a way you can get very, very similar results with your poultry. So what I'm gonna do is I'm simply going to break the turkey up and put it on my dehydrator trays here. Now right here, these particular silicone trays, I have two different sets for my kasori, which is what I'm using for the turkey today, or for the meats. Since I've got my herbs on my Nesco and I want a lower temp temperature on all of those. Anyway, these silicone trays are just excellent. These brown ones are my more recent ones and I have the green ones too. The Bright Kitchen like I have here for the Nesco, so I brought those out just so you can see they make them in Nesco. The Bright Kitchen is the only one I know so far that makes them for the Nesco dehydrators. But there's several brands now, so several places now that are making them for both the Kasori and the Excalibur. And uh, these are a better price, the brown ones, than the Bright Kitchen. And the quality seems at least as good, if not better. One thing that's nicer about this particular one is the the lip comes up just a little bit higher. So if you're doing liquids, that might be a good option. Now you can put this on cloth like I do with my herbs, but because it might drip and make a mess when you're doing meats, I prefer to go ahead and do it on the silicone. So I just want to spread that out there, um, break it up enough that it's going to dry well. And we'll do another tray. I'll link to this down below. I'll also link to the Bright Kitchen Nesco ones if you're interested. But in the link I'll put to this, you'll be able to find the ones for both Excalibur and the Kasori. And there we go. So there's three trays of the turkey. Now, the main reason I'm doing the salmon is because I still have a lot of these quart jars of salmon that um, when Patrick and his dad went fishing down in California, brought back all the salmon Patrick caught and all the salmon that his dad caught. So I still have a ton. I've been trying to use it, but I have a lot, but that's why I can it in quart jars so I could save space in there. But let's, I wanted, I've been wanting to try this to see how well, um, especially after it's been canned like this, how well it will dehydrate. And then when it comes to using it, how that'll work out. So anyway, I'm just 
this has got pepper in it so that's you'll if you see any little black spots i had added pepper into the jars when i was canning this up but boy this is good stuff i like to use home can salmon or steelhead steelhead's very similar to salmon which is what we typically get around here steelhead we get a lot of salmon around here too but we get a lot of steelhead as well but anyway the um love using the canned salmon for making i use it in place of tuna fish you know people buy tuna fish and i use that in place of tuna fish when making like a tuna noodle casserole but instead it's either steelhead or salmon and i like it better it is so good and i also use it in stir fries and various other dishes so anyway i'll be doing some more trays like that but let's talk about temperature so Typically, when I'm dehydrating most things, I do not go above 115 degrees. That can be eggs, milk, uh, even yogurt. I might go a little lower than that. Herbs, I, I don't typically go higher than 110, unless it's calendula flowers or certain other herbs. But when it comes to meat, I do recommend going a little higher. So I, uh, though you can go up to 160 degrees, whenever I'm using silicone, I don't like to go that high. I will take it up to 125 is the highest I'm going to go. So that's what I'm going to do here for the turkey and the salmon. And no, I'm not concerned about dehydrating them in the same dehydrator. But you might want to consider that, you know, the, the scents, they might cross over and the flavors may mix. I don't think that's going to happen. I've never had such issues before. My guess is about 10 to 12 hours. It's going to depend on your dehydrator, how efficient it is, how you're setting it up. Um, if you're using something like a Nesco where you have the stackable trays, what's going to happen is whatever tray is on top, like on mine, the heat source and the fan come from the top. So that means the top trays are always going to dry first. And so you just want to keep an eye on that. So it might take eight to 10 hours for the top tray, but longer for the ones on the bottom. But once the ones on top are dry, I take those off, just keep lifting off the next tray down and then put them up as soon as they're dry. So that's just a rough estimate on time. So what I'm gonna do here in text is I'm going to be adding to the screen the actual times that it took for all of this to dry so you'll have a good idea and again i'm doing this in the kasori which is a cabinet style dehydrator which means that everything should dry equally unlike your stackable ones everything should dry pretty much at the same time obviously you're going to have some differences in thickness but just keep checking it so i can give you these times so it's going to depend on the the heat setting you choose to use if you use a higher heat with meat that's totally safe especially since it's already been cooked or canned anyway it's going to take less time for it to dehydrate overall so it just depends on how you're doing that and uh, i would say at a higher temperature check it at uh, no longer than eight hours and see where it's at maybe even check it at six then once it's fully dry what you you know you what you want to do and i'll have some clips here some, from the previous batch of turkey that i did it should be very very crispy i'm assuming the salmon is going to turn out just like the turkey it, that it, when you go to run it through your fingers it should be very crispy and then you'll know that it's fully dry. Make sure you feel it all. If you end up feeling anything that feels a little bit rubbery, make sure you put that back on in your dehydrator and let it finish out. You can still take the drier stuff out to help speed up the process. And then when it comes to storage, what you want to do is once it's fully dry, you want to make sure it's completely cooled down to at least room temperature before you put it in your jars to vacuum seal. So, and vacuum sealing in this case is very important. And no, I do not worry about whatever fat may be in there. I want that fat in there because that's going to, that has nutrition, that has flavor, and I'm not concerned about it. But it is because of that fat that you need to vacuum seal it to help pre prevent rancidity. It's not going to go rancid if you vacuum seal it. So that means that as you're working through your jar, Every time you open your jar, if you're going to keep it on the shelf and you know you're not going to use it immediately the next day, re-vacuum seal it or you can keep that open jar in your freezer and just use it out of that. That's what I do with the bone broth that I dehydrate up and then vacuum seal. The jars I'm not working through, I keep in the pantry and then once I open a jar, I just, because it's something I'm going to use more often, I don't feel like vacuum sealing it 
between every use. I just keep it in the freezer and it's just right in the door. I can grab it out and then, you know, it's just a pint sized jar. So it's not taking up a ton of room. So you can do the same thing with your meat. Now, if you want to uh, a quick demonstration on how I vacuum seal, I'll go ahead and show that here by opening up this jar. So I'm gonna open this jar up and then I'll show you how I vacuum seal, but this is, whoa, look at that. I had such a good seal, it sent the, the turkey bits flying everywhere. But I also have a video where I show many other options of ways that you can vacuum seal. It's all gonna depend on what's gonna fit into your pocketbook and your lifestyle and so on. But my all time favorite way is using a brake bleeder pump, which is found in automotive. I'll have a link to this down below. Some people think that you find it in food storage. No, it's a brake bleeder pump. That's it's for automotive, but it has more purposes than just bleeding brakes. So when you, if you've like I did here, since I removed the lid and I'm going to put it back on, I want to make sure I don't have any turkey bits all over the rim of the jar and same thing with the edge of the lid any, anywhere in this gummy area. You wanna make sure there's nothing embedded in there, no du uh, turkey dust or whatever, and then put that lid on. Then in this case, I'm using a food saver top. You, for a while, food saver had the monopoly on the lids like these. Now, many other companies have come out with lesser expensive versions that work just as well. Um, there is a, a, a pretty cheap set that has the wide and regular mouth that has the handle like this. I bought one of the first cheap sets that didn't have the handle and the having this little handle on top makes it so much easier for removing. So I'll link to that set uh, because it has both the wide, the regular, and some of those even come with their own pump. So I'll link to one of those full sets down below. And some of them even come now with a little electric pump, but I still, this is my favorite way. So I put the food saver top on over that. I insert this tip right here into the top. There's other different configurations you can make where you don't have to hold it in place. You just got to hold it firmly. I rest the brake bleeder handle against the counter. I don't pump like this because that's going to put a lot of strain on your wrists. But doing it this way and then just using your whole arm clear up to the shoulder and pumping down is going to save your wrist quite a bit. And then I typically just pump until it stops moving. Uh, I used to just go up to where it said 15, but now I go farther than that, especially since my needle, it's a little not calibrated correct, quite right. So typically just going until it stops, the needle stops moving is going to be your safest bet, especially when you're putting up meat or nuts or anything with high fat. And take this off. And there you go, it's sealed. Let me prove that to you by holding it by the lid. Nice tight seal, that's not going anywhere, but as a safety measure, I still recommend putting the band on. Some people freak out about this because they hear, don't put the bands on your canned goods. Well, this is not a pressure canned, water bath canned good, this is dried goods. That whole thing doesn't apply. But even with canning, I do put the lids the bands back on some of my jars. And I have a video on this where I explain the importance of making sure the bands come off, they're clean, they're dry, the jar is clean and dry before you put them back on and you only put them on very loosely, very, very loosely, so that they're like, like this loose. And if you go watch that video, you'll see why I do that with some of the jars, though not all. But in the case of dried goods, I put it on, I put it on snug. I don't wrench it on there super hot, hard, I just put it on snug. The reason for this is if your jar happens to lose its seal, having that band on nice and snug is at least going to help it last longer in there. And then if you go to grab the jar and, you, and it had come unsealed and you don't have the band holding it in place, you could possibly have little bits of chicken and turkey going all over the place or fish as the case may be. So what I'm gonna do here is, um, since I'm going to finish out this video here, I'll put in either a clip or some text here and let you know how, what I think about the salmon and how it turned out and then give you some more updates on that down the road as I start using it and working with it. But I, I do believe it's going to be very similar to the turkey in this case. So again, the salmon was already pre-canned, so it's already been pressure cooked and then the turkey was cooked and then frozen. So I'm not talking about meat, by the way, I'm not talking about poultry that's been frozen raw. I'm talking about poultry that's been cooked and then 
frozen after that. So like you're making a big turkey, you're making a chicken, you have extra, just put it in the freezer and then let it sit in there for a couple of days and then take it out, thaw it, and then dehydrate it. And that's a way that, it's just one way that you can uh, make more space in both your cabinets and in your freezer because the dehydrated foods take up far less room than canned goods and even take up less space than freeze-dried goods. Because the way freeze-drying and dehydrating work are different and so thus freeze-drying leaves air pockets inside your food where dehydrating doesn't. And they both have their benefits. I personally, and I do stock up on some freeze-dried food, foods because of that, but for the most part, I'm interested, I prefer dehydrating pretty much anything I can get my hands on, even though I do like to can quite a bit as well. And then one more thing before I close this video out is cooking with it. Um, it's as easy as adding it to a sauce or a gravy and then cooking it all together. Or if you want to just soak it a little bit in some kind of broth or water and then put it in, like say you're gonna use it in a stir fry, which I have not tried yet, I, so I don't know. Mostly all I've done with the dehydrated turkey like this and chicken is used it in making like a, a turkey a la king that I serve over rice. And, but adding it to soups, you could just throw it in right in with your soups and that would work great. And if you have used dehydrated chicken, turkey, or fish in anything, please share with us your experiences down below. Or if you do try this out, come back and share it with us what you think about how it turned out so we can learn and get some more ideas from you as well. All right, well, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.